Good evening, everyone. I hope you're having a great day. Welcome to Marriott Ecology Sports. My name is Matt Williamson. We have a special guest here with us. You want to introduce yourself to yeah, everyone? My name is Grant Swan. I'll be your guys' co-host. Yeah, so we have our Rainbow Six match for you tonight. It is Marietta College uh, versus Colorado School of Mines. Uh, right now, we are still getting the, the lobby set up. Uh, this will be a best of three. Uh, so hopefully this will go into the go from the Pioneer's favor. Um, so right now we see people getting added to the lobby. So while we are uh, getting that set up, we'll go and get the starting lineup uh, for your Marietta College Pioneers. So we have NPC for real, Vincent Anderson, Frags MC, Alex Meyer, Rez474, Dylan Pauls, Boba Flex7, Bobby Weber, and Rico, Rico Rodriguez, double zero, Ying Zing Wang, or we just call him Rico. Uh, so they've been competing in Collegiate R6 for a couple weeks now, and it's been a little bit of a struggle. I mean, a lot of the teams in Collegiate R6 are very good. Most of them are at least Platinum Diamond level, and this is still a very... A uh, new team, but with each week they have been improving. So we're going to see uh, how well they do uh, this week. Mm -hmm. Should be a good game we got here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, people are getting added. So just to let you know what the the maps will be as we're getting everything set up. Uh, so the first game will be uh, Clubhouse with uh, Marietta defending, and Colorado will be attacking. Uh, the second map will be Consulate. Marietta will also be defending that. And Colorado will be attacking. And if we do go to a game three, then that will be Bank. And that will be Colorado defending and Marietta attacking. All right. So, yeah, people are just they're still getting things added to the lobby. Uh, so once we have that set up, we should be fine. Yeah, so looks like most of Colorado... Yeah, it looks like Colorado is there. Don't know where everyone else from Marietta is. We'll get them set up. Okay, so we're going to try to get the invites set up so we are good to go. Uh, while we are waiting, uh, don't forget that if you want all the updates for what's going on with Marietta College Esports, please be sure to follow us on social media. Uh, you can follow us on our uh, Twitch channel here for all the, the broadcasts because we try to broadcast as many matches as possible. But you can also follow us on Twitter at Marietta Esports, Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash Marietta College Esports. You can even follow us on YouTube, bit.ly slash Marietta College Esports. Uh, we do try to get our all of our matches will be uploaded to our YouTube channel at uh, one week after the broadcast. But if you don't want to wait for the VODs for these matches, if you want to see them sooner, you can always subscribe to our Twitch channel so you'll be able to get access to our VODs immediately. Uh, you'll also be able to utilize the custom emotes uh, courtesy of our communication and brand management uh, department. They did an exceptional job with those. Uh, and your support will allow us to be able to provide more of those perks and emotes uh, to you. And if you have Amazon Prime, you can subscribe with Twitch Prime for free. Yeah, so don't forget about that. And I think, I, at least I've heard there may be some specials for students where you can get like Twi or Amazon yeah. Prime for like six months for mm -hmm. either a, like a low cost. I can't remember the exact price, but it's a good yeah. Deal. yeah. So if you are a student, then you can get Amazon Prime for a really good deal. And that free sub you can use every month to support your favorite Twitch channel. Hopefully it's us. But uh, that definitely helps towards uh, building up the, the program. I mean, all the, the, the support will go towards purchasing additional equipment, supplies, jerseys, uh, additional staff. So all that would be a huge help uh, for us. All right, so it looks like everyone is here. So let me just make sure. Okay, I think, okay. Just make sure everyone's good. Okay, yeah, so I think everyone's there. So I'm just doing the ready check to make sure that uh, both teams are good to go. So once we have that, we will get the game to you. Uh, we'll go ahead and get the audio on. That way we don't uh, forget to get that in there. Okay, so we have that set up, so just getting the the ready checks out. Although I haven't seen both sides ready just yet. Uh, so just as a... Okay, so looks like 
Okay, so it looks like Colorado sneezes just a minute, which is fine. Uh, just as a reminder, the first game is going to be Clubhouse uh, with Colorado attacking and Marietta will be defending. All right, so while we're waiting to get the match up, so for something like Clubhouse, what would you kind of expect as far as composition, ops? Because you're, you're the expert. This is going to be a lot of me asking stupid questions to Grant. Um, yeah, I'm not sure with uh, specific compositions competitively, but I do know Clubhouse is a fan favorite map. It's got reworked recently, so it's viable for uh, competitive play. Um, and then the other two, Consulate and Bank, they've been around for a while. Um, very familiar maps that uh, I know a lot of guys like to like to play. Okay. All right, so we, we could really expect just about anything as far as mm -hmm. comps go. All right, so I think... All right, so I think everyone is ready. So we're gonna go ahead and get things started up here. So let me get the uh, overlay here. All right, here we go. So this is game one of best of three, Barry College versus Colorado School of Mines. So we are in the ban phase. So are there any particular ops that you would expect to be banned? Uh, I know in my games, I see a lot of Jackals banned. Um, just because he's very annoying to play against. Uh, let's see what they go with here. It's their first pick. Jackal, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, he's an interesting guy. He uh, He's super annoying to defend against because it does not allow for a lot of roaming. Uh, he can track your footprints and find out where you are. Now, didn't they recently? I thought they made a, like a, a rework with him a little bit on how that tracking works. Um, yeah, they, they are looking to do that because he's an odd character they're not he's not doesn't have a high win rate but people still just don't like to play against him so they're trying to balance him out doka be a ban which is uh she's also a pretty annoying character to play against she calls your phones um so defenders their phones buzz and kind of gives away your location you have to take a second to shut it off and during that short time you're viable to get uh, attacked Okay, so it's just about you don't want to get spotted out. Yeah. Because if, if they know where you're at, then mm -hmm. you're dead. Mira. So okay. that's, that's another expected ban? Yeah, she is very good at defense. She's able to sort of open up reinforced walls or even just walls in general to look through them. And it helps with kind of keeping the attackers in check, knowing, out, knowing where they are, whatnot. Okay sort of have to play around her for a two-way mirror, one-way mirrors. All right, so I think Marietta gets the last ban, so we'll see. Echo, maybe? There we go. <laughs> yeah, that's an Echo. Um, yeah, he is very annoying to play against. He can disrupt um, bomb planting, right? So he has his drone that sticks to the ceiling, essentially, and it goes invisible. It can um, really disorient you if it hits you with one of its charges. Okay. All right, so let's see what kind of compositions that uh, we would be, that both sides would be going with. And we are following the traditional uh, professional rules, so they can choose a, a six pick after seeing what yes. the other team is playing. All right. All right, so for Marietta, so we got Castle Mute, Capkin Rook, mm -hmm. Bandit. Bandit's a very popular choice. Um, he's just super annoying to play against. Mute's good for uh, stopping drones. Um, mm -hmm. Castle reinforces Rook's a very good defender. I've also seen him used uh, to counter Thermite sometimes, where like mm -hmm. if they try to put the, uh, yeah. the little blasting yeah. up and then they try to electrocute it. So I've seen that in a couple of maps. Yeah, bandit tricking is a very annoying tactic to play against. Mm -hmm. And then we did Bandits see that Colorado did make a uh, a swap here at the very last second. I couldn't get a chance to check to see what the op was. Although I'm not familiar with all the symbols, I don't have my cheat sheet up this time. But okay, uh, so we're underway here. So forgive me for trying to make sure we figure out the controls. Looks like we've got uh, Thatcher on the attacking side to try and counter the uh, the bandit and the, essentially all the trap using defenders so they can try and get their thermite off. Okay. 
See, at this point in the match, I never can tell that it's better just to get the topside view during the prep phase or try to see what uh, the drones are able to, to figure out from this. Top view. Uh, top view is pretty good for the prep phase. See where everyone's going, how they're setting up defense. Alright, so we do see... Right, game started. Okay. So let's see if we can get into the, the game here a little bit. So we see Colorado working on trying to get some intel with the, the drones, trying to figure out what... Because I didn't see any notice of them finding the bomb yet, so... So they probably don't know exactly where yet, although... For sure have an idea based on those barricades. Mm -hmm. Castle castle barricades. Yeah, we see the Hibana already looking to try to break in. So they've opened one hole to the bomb room. A bomb has been located. Okay, so now they know where there's one, so we'll have to see how Merida can respond to this. And we already see one from Marietta went down, so Beowulf was able to get the kill there. And even Himbana actually got very low and took some hits there. But Boba ends up going down as a uh, result of that fire. I think he just was on death's door. Oh. So well for Marietta right now. Now there's a minute for 16, but it is pretty. Yeah, it's still five versus two. Got going on. Let's see how Marietta responds. And they were able to take down Rico, so all that's left is Rez. And round one does go to uh, Colorado. So we'll have to see if Marietta can make any adjustments uh, with that. Yeah, we'll have to see how they respond. So would that just be a change in comp, or do you think it just needs to be a change in how they executed that round? Um, I would definitely say execution. Uh, they weren't quite able to pull off a kill. We'll might may maybe do a change of location, I'm not sure. Okay. Looks like the team comps have stayed the same, except we got a Jaeger in there. And a rook. They didn't have their rook last time either. So it looks like they're banking on the little extra armor to, mm -hmm. to help with that. I think those flashes from Habana early game uh, must have messed with them. So we got Jaeger here probably to prevent that. Mm -hmm. yeah, it does not look like there's going to be any six picks from either side. Attackers need to locate and defuse as many bombs as they can. Okay. Got the same location. So do you think Colorado would expect that? That they would pick the same location for the bombs? Normally, uh, locations do stay the same. It's just a matter of changing up how they would defend. Maybe changing an off or two. Okay. So they would probably expect Colorado to head straight for their location. Yeah, the drones most likely are. Maybe kind of fun. Yeah, they yeah. found it. Yeah, there's the drone right there. Right, they've opened up a the wall there to rotate. It's good to keep the garage covered. Okay, they've got that Jaeger trap right where Abana threw her flashes in last round. Yeah, it's like they're already heading straight for the site. In fact, there's already holes there. Yeah, so the strategy with that, you put it in holes uh, into the walls before you reinforce them because it actually allows you to hear better. Um, weird mechanic. Huh. But it does allow you to hear the attackers much better. So they have a better idea if they... Yeah, of uh, where sure. they are and stuff. Okay. Yeah, if you know where they are, then you can counter it. Mm -hmm. We got more flashes going in. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to connect because no one's really... 
Although we do see a little bit of fire there. And Frags was able to actually take one down, so uh, Cholera is down to four. Mm, their Hibana is out. That is a, uh, that's a good thing for Marietta. Got less opportunity to get breached. Frags will actually get another kill, so it's now three to five. Although Rez is down, I mean, he's not dead yet, but he's getting close. And actually, two downs. Yeah. And Rez is not doing too well either, so this could turn into a three v three pretty quickly, unless. Oh. You hate to see that. You hate to see it. He was probably focused on the Rez. Did not quite see that claymore there. So all that's left is Boba Flex and Rico. Yes. Cause they Yeah, and there goes Rez. Attacker's taking it pretty slow now. Yeah. There's only three of them. Loading mag! And then all that's left is Rico because uh, Boba did end up going down. Unfortunately, they caught him rotating from bomb site to bomb site. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what happened there was just uh, NPC was trying to get to to try to revive Flex, but end up going down. I think that's what was the turning point for that uh, yes, round. Yes, that was. All right, so we'll see what uh, adjustments are made here. So, uh, for each game, it is the first to seven uh, for this. So there's still quite a few rounds left, but Marietta is going to have to get something on the board soon. Yeah. Looks like the attackers are going to stick with what they got. A uh, couple changes on defense here. Mm -hmm. Doc, Pulse, Legion. Legion's a pretty good uh, defensive operator. His traps are very hard to see, practically invisible, mm -hmm. and they are very annoying to, to go against when you step on them because you got to pull it out. Or if you leave if you leave it in, it, it does damage over time. Mm -hmm. And it looks like the Marriott also they had the dock for the, the ranged heals, but it looks like they swapped for the mutes. Attackers yes. need to locate and defuse bombs. They're probably thinking dock at first because they could have gotten um, that banded up last round, but switched to rook. Actually I think they switched to mute. Oh they switched to mute. Yeah, they switched, switched to, that. to mute. Because mute is Mute is a very helpful operator. So think maybe it's the fact that they changed the location of the yes. bomb, so they're trying to make it more difficult for Colorado to find where the bomb is. Yeah, I believe that's the reason. Mute's good for um, first round um, defenses at a new location. Ten seconds left before insertion. Five seconds. And I'm gonna guess they probably put one of Legion's traps around here. I remember, I remember that's a pretty popular place to put those traps. Yes, because there isn't much way the drones can get around. Mm -hmm. We see yeah, you're setting up those those grenade turrets, right? Yeah, so any any projectile that comes comes within the range, they just get shot down. Good for countering grenades or flashes. And we see Frax has already gone down. I bacon in a cup. It looks like Marietta got a kill, so now it is a 4v4 uh, with Rook getting that kill. Mm -hmm. Attackers have located a bomb. Deploying it looks like Beowulf knows at least where one person is. Make your prayer. We do see some gunfire, but I can't tell from whom. Bomb located by attackers. Lightning's out. And we saw that uh, Colorado took out Rico, so it's now a 4v3. But Rez was able to get killed. Now it's 3v3. It's an 
unfortunate for Rez. He kind of got trapped in that corner there. So now there's only one person left for Marietta. Bacon a cup really going off this round. Got quite a few kills. Yeah. I, mean, I think that early kill definitely made a difference. Yes. Sometimes, I'm not sure if he was spawn peeking, but sometimes it can backfire if you are trying to spawn peek. Yeah, I was not able to tell. I mean, that could very well have been it. Alright, doesn't look like we would expect... I mean, Colorado is kind of keep the same group, and it's it's working, so it is working why change well it? For them, yeah. Although it looks like, looks like Mary is bringing out the, the, possibly the Cade? Yeah, so Cade is essentially, um, he's similar to Bandit. Alright, looks like they go from Bandit to Mute. Possible change of location again? Arsenal room. Oh no, I think it's the same, same location. But yeah, Cade, he has a electrifying trap that can essentially do the same the things can. as Bandit. Okay. All right, so it looks like they are going with the same location as the last round. Mm -hmm. So maybe they're trying to throw them off thinking, okay, they got the mute out, so they may be trying to put it in a different location so they won't know where it is. But yeah. I, mean, I feel like it's a, it's kind of like a, a little bit of a chess game going on in here when you're picking your ops to... Oh, it very much is um, a mental game as much as it is a skill-based game. Ten seconds to go. So we see, it looks like Bacon's already pretty close. Is that him or is that a drone? Oh, that's his drone. Okay. So they're just kind of leaving the drone there to see if they can find out anything. So we do hear some gunfire and Rez is able to take one down. But he is at half health. And Colorado was able to get back to it as well and taking down NPC, so it is a 4v4. But we see Bacon is very low as a result, and the Legion trap comes in and takes him down. Or Legion, sorry. Mm. Legion was prepared for that. He knew Bacon went through that doorway last round, so he put a Legion trap right underneath it. Ready for him. We see a little gunfire trade, but doesn't look like anyone's taking any major damage, although Rez is less than half health. Yeah, very common in the early stages of the round to just sort of hold your hold your line of sights, peek a little bit, not to engage too far. Although it looks like Beowulf got a little bit of intel, Repent. where one of them is. And we do see Beowulf going down, so there was some heavy trade in there, but Frags was able to get the kill and only just take about a quarter of his health. A little less than that, actually. So Colorado's going to be trying to make a move here. I mean, they only have 50 seconds left, and they're only, there's only 2v4 left. And they got about 30 seconds left to actually plant. A bomb has been located. And they were able to take out Rico. And we see a bit of trade fire, but 15 seconds is left, so this may be the round for Marietta, especially they took out the remaining defenders, so Marietta does take the round.
So we think that round, the, the lesion definitely made a difference there. Oh, definitely. Lesion was a very, very good pick by Marietta. Um, caused Bacon to get out of the match early. He was pretty much the star of the last round. He seems to be a very good player. And if I remember correctly, I think most of Colorado's players are at, at least platinum. So Marietta is dealing with a very good team, but Sorry. Marietta is on the board. So we'll see if they can keep up that momentum. Seems like Colorado is sticking with the same, um, same operators here. It looks like Marietta they, is going with the, the captain this time. Interesting they uh, changed from uh, Legion to Capkin there. Yeah, and they've kind of locked in it. Oh, yeah, we're not getting any s six picks from either side. But yeah, I'm surprised about that too, considering how well the Legion uh, was affected there. So now it looks like Marietta is going back to the original mm -hmm. point from rounds one through yeah. three or so. Yeah, Legion is not as effective in this um, area of the map because you, there are many areas, many ways attackers can get in um, very quickly that Legion wouldn't be able to set a trap. Okay, so then it makes sense that they wouldn't pick it for this round, knowing this is where they're going to put the bombs. Okay, so as someone who doesn't really know much about Capcom, what, what kind of role would he play with this setup? Capcom? Yeah. Um, he places his explosive traps on doorways and windows. So as long as they keep that those two walls, two main walls, um, locked down, the defender or attackers will have to be forced to enter through the doorways or the windows and deal with his traps. Okay. All right, so it looks like we're going to see the little game of cat and mouse here with the uh, this wall here. Yeah, the bandit tricking. All set to blow it up. Knock, knock. But it looks like only half the wall is electrocuted right now, so if they were to have like their thermite plant on the other side, they would be able to knock it out, right? Yeah, so what the strategy with bandit tricking is, once you hear thermite, um, his charge go down, you place your shock um, device, shock wire, on the wall to destroy the thermite charge. And it's sort of a game of, uh, like a guessing game of when it's going to happen and when Thatcher's going to throw his EMP grenade. Okay, and I think we actually saw that in a couple of weeks ago when yes. Mary was playing as a team that was the kind of that trade-off between the Thatcher, the, the... Yeah, it's all about timing. Mm -hmm. And we did see while well, kind of going that it's now a 4v4. You see some heavy gunfire, and Colorado is able to take out Boba Flex. They will holding a nice line of sight into the bomb rooms. They do have the opening. But they still have about a minute left to actually plant. Attackers have dropped the bomb diffuser. So interesting the the drop though they just Attackers recovered. Okay, so Colorado was able to get a kill there, but I was about to ask, like dropping the diffuser, is that a strategy to swap players with Yeah, the... so you can change it to different players depending on who you want to diffuse and who you want to like cover you. Mm -hmm. Seems like the got diffuse off. Okay. Took the round. Yeah, they were able to so it was down to a three V one, so that gave them a chance to plant the bomb and then one of the other guys was able to finish off uh, the last player from Marietta. So this round does go to uh, Colorado. So we'll see if Marietta can make some adjustments. Maybe go back to the bottom floor with and add the, the lesion to it. Because I mean that worked pretty well that one time. We'll see some choice of buck. It 
we've got Legion again. And then I need and smoke. Oh, it looks like they're going to be swapping the smoke. So if they are going to go with the Legion, you'd probably expect that bottom floor for the bomb. Let's see what they pick here. Mm -hmm. Let's go with the Jaeger. Attackers need to locate and defuse bombs. It looks like. Sa okay, so I feel like they picked Legion to sort of help their bandit out. The last game he was, um, he was taken out. Res was taken out from below him. They were able to shoot out the floor below him. I feel like that's also why they chose Buck on the attacking team to help out with trying to counter that bandit tricking. Legion might be there to possibly help counter anyone trying to attack Res from up below. Okay, so how would how, how does Buck play an actual role in this? Buck, his uh, his equipment allows him to, to open up very large holes in non-reinforced objects and breakable walls and floors. Um, he has like an attachment to his gun under his barrel that it's a shotgun that allows for large openings in any type of like wooden wall or floor. Okay, so Paul use it to get another opening somewhere while the cat and mouse game goes on over here. I can already see Bacon and uh, Zenith in position. We do see some shots going on already. And Bacon actually took some hit. And one from Meredith already goes down. The NPC gets the kill, so now it's a 4v4, but Bubbleflex goes down at the same time. So right now, Colorado has pretty good control over the bomb sites, especially now that they got frags down. Oh, that is very unfortunate. There was miscommunication there. Bacon was trying to take out a defensive. Well, his teammate ran across. Fortunately, a headshot at him that is very unlucky. But yes, but Rico's the only one left for Marietta, so he's going to have to be able to get the remaining kills and defuse the, uh, stop the diffuser. So even though they got actually headshot the person, still uh, they still were able to plant the the bomb. Yes. Let's see what Rico can do here. And the round still goes to Colorado. So with that, uh, Colorado is up 5-1, to one, so they're only two games away from taking the first game. Marietta needs an urgent response here. Yeah, so be, what could they do at this point? Is there anything like they can change location, comp, uh -huh. strategy? If you were in this position, what would you do? I have noticed that their site that they keep going back to is not working for them, and the attackers do tend to focus on that um, one specific bomb site, bomb site B, I believe. Um, I'm not sure if I would switch locations or if I would change up my defensive tactics drastically to focus more on the bomb site B because that's very much where they tend to focus. Attack from they all attack from like the same areas mm -hmm. every round. And yeah, it looks like Mary may be making a, a swap here, so they're adding, or actually the. The roles are reversed now, if I remember right, after so many rounds, they actually yes, swap. Yes. So now Marietta is on the attack, and we have Colorado defending. Very common ops. Um, we've got Thatcher and Sledge and Thermite on the attack. We've got a Jaeger and a Rook, which we've seen as well in defense.
Okay, so now that Marion is on the offense, what would be the ideal approach for trying to get to this bomb site? This bomb site? Definitely uh, entering from the garage area to get a attack on one side. And then as well as above, there are a couple hatches above to hope hopefully they can break through them. Get great lines of sight down into the bomb site. Got Twitch taking out some cameras. A bomb has been located. You said they were able to find the location of the bomb. It's just a matter of where does Mary want to enter. And they were able to take out one from Colorado already. Yeah, that vigil was most likely roaming, trying to get a spawn peak, an early kill. And He's got very, very much used as a roamer. You can't see him with your drones. But, so he got punished for trying to spawn peak. Very true, yeah. We may see something going on over here, because, or maybe not, because they were so close to each other. They, they were very close. <laughs> Although we do see NPC taking a couple hits, right. and they're able to take out one from Colorado. So it's now three v five. Got a good base basement uh, garage push going for them. PC gets a double kill, so now there's only two left, so this is, I don't want to jinx it, but it's looking good since there's only now one left for Colorado. This round looking very good for Marietta right now. Bomb located by attackers. Attackers are activating the diffuser. Marietta did get the although okay, so they get the trade, but that was enough for Marietta to take the round since there's only one left, so Cracks uh, with that good wall bang there. All right, so we're not done yet. So Marietta was able to take the, the round, but they still have to take a couple more if they want to come back and win this game. Yeah. But that's it's a good step. Look very good for Marietta attacking. I have noticed that it most games attacking is where most teams do get their get their wins from. Interesting, because that does, it makes it interesting because. Um, the way the maps were decided, there was a map uh, ban and pick face before the, the match started. Mm -hmm. And uh, Marietta was able to choose Clubhouse first, but Colorado got to choose the side. And they chose to... Uh, uh, yeah, no, wait, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is Clubhouse. Make sure we're looking at the right notes. Yeah, Clubhouse. And they Colorado chose attack. to attack first. Okay. Which was quite surprising. Usually, like, you would want to defend first, but mm -hmm. and maybe that's why, because they knew that they were better at attacking than defending, possibly. Attackers need to locate and defuse as many bombs as they can. Time to armor up. All right, so we see Marietta didn't make too many major changes. They did bring out the, the buck uh, this time around. But everything wonder, else appears to be the same. I wonder if they anticipated them going changing locations like this um, with that buck, that buck pick. And they probably did because they're already up on that floor. It looks yes, like they already found um, at least have a good idea where the bomb is because they see where yeah, Colorado is setting things up. So they can probably they know exactly where the bomb site is. Yeah. Attacker's objective is to locate a bomb and defuse it. Yeah. Alright, so we'll see how Merida tries to infiltrate. So we see NPC and Boba heading towards what I call the wall. I'm sure there's an official name for this. Yeah, it's, it's the most popular uh, place to breach at 
at this spawn location. Got the bandit tricking going on. Camera feed up and running. Yeah, I think he's just trying to listen in for when they try to put up and line things up. Although I believe Attack MPC the is there. Yeah, so Thermite Attack is there to the try to diffuser. play the cat and mouse game between the EMP and the, yeah. the charge and the... It looks like Bandit did get one of Thermite's charges, so he only has one left. Looks like he's going to do it anyway. Like he does get the charge. Yes, they've gotten it off. Oh, Bandit did have one charge left. That's unfortunate. So now they'll have to find another way in. Looks like one from Mary has gone to two from Mary's already gone down. So they've got to just go on the... Uh, yeah, Colorado kind of go on the defense yeah. a little bit there. If you're unable to take that wall, it is very tough to defend this wrong side. Or to attack this bomb mm -hmm. side. I knew what you meant. Yeah. And I'm sure everyone else did too. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing great, by the way. Thank it's you. a lot easier to commentate when I have someone who actually knows how the game works. Yeah. <laughs> I remember a couple weeks ago when I was trying to talk about this, everyone was like, oh, this guy has no idea what he's doing. He's level five. <laughs> yeah, 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 rebel, rebel. So. Attacker's bomb diffuser has been dropped. We saw another from going down, so there's only two left with the Pioneers, so it's going to be really difficult for them to make a, a push. Especially with that diffuser down now. And with only 40 seconds left. Yes. And we saw there that Rico was trying to get some shots in, but just wasn't enough, and uh, Marietta goes now. Unfortunately, it's a flawless round. If I remember correctly, that's the sixth round for Colorado, so this is, yes, well, match it point. is match point. That's going to be important for Beale to marry to predict where the bomb site would be. And right now, it looks like Colorado is going to be adding the Valkyrie to their composition. An alibi. I can't say I know anything about those ops. Okay, so Valkyrie has cameras that she can throw. She has three of them um, to help them spot defenders. They're also much harder to see, much smaller uh, spot attackers. And then Alibi, she has these decoys that she puts down of herself. Okay. And if a attacker sh um, shoots the decoy, then they are spotted for, uh, for Alibi. Okay. And we don't see, we don't, and yeah, we don't see some of the others. So it looks like, oh, we'll see what's up. Okay, so they are going to go with the bottom floor. NPC has picked Nomad um, to attack with. Nomad is actually one of my favorite operators to attack with. Uh, she is, she's very fun because her gadget, she shoots out a little device that if anyone comes with it in scary of effect, they get knocked back and knocked down, sort of disabled for a short amount of time, in which the attackers can take advantage of that and go after them. Uh, we'll see if he's able to utilize it, because this is a do or die uh, round for Marietta if they want to stay in this game, otherwise it, the game one will go to Colorado. See, watching out for any spawn peeking. Attackers have located a bomb. Doesn't look like any spawn peeking is happening, and they do know where the bomb is located. And it's just a matter of how they're gonna get in. There's an alibi decoy. Twitch can take it out. Rose does take that out. At the cost of his drone. But that would be a worthwhile trade though, wouldn't it? Yeah. And we see NPC has gone down. And the diffuser is down too. And two are already down for Marietta. So this is not looking good. 
Is there going to still go back and pick up the diffuser? Thermite is looking to push into that tunnel. See what Boba can do here. Do they get this one? They're just gonna be looking to try to get kills and not even worry about the the, the bomb. Uh, I believe so. At this point, you do not have. Um, they don't have much, much to work with. Being down two people. See maybe something going up here up top. And Rez was able to get the kill, so and it's now a 4v3. That is a very, <laughs> very interesting tactic we had from Anon here. Yeah. He uh he laid down in a in a fallen operator's um, body to sort of hide himself. Was able to pull a kill from it. Yeah. Yeah, I had Mifo at first. It looked like he was down, but I was like, wait a minute, he's not, and was able to get the kill. So now all that's left is Rico. He's got 40 seconds to take out the other four members of Colorado. And with that, uh, game one will go to uh, Colorado. So Marietta was able to get a, f a little bit, but yeah, they were overall. looking they were looking very good a couple rounds there. Just unfortunately, uh, Colorado just played that very well. All right, so All right. just give us a minute here as we try to get things here set up. All right, so, so with game two, uh, we are going with Consulate. So once again, Marietta will be defending first and Colorado will be attacking. Uh, so I'm just going to check to see whenever they're ready. All right, so while we are waiting for that, um, Actually, Colorado is already ready, so we'll see when Marietta is ready. So, with Consulate, I mean, what are some possible strategies or compositions that uh, that Marietta can use here? Um, Consulate is a very vertical map, if I remember, which will certainly change the operators um, for both sides. See, uh, we'll see how they go the first round to kind of indicate the flow of the game. They do get another band pick and band phase. Right? Yeah, like yeah. This is see. a completely yeah. different game. Yeah, so it's just it's a different map. It's just another game. So yeah, they'll be able to band and pick other operators. See if any bands pick uh, bands change because of map. Are there any particular that you would expect to be banned for this map? Um, the basic um, attackers and defenders would be Jackal and Echo, of course. Uh, not really sure. Who they go for as the the other picks? All right, well, we'll have to see. I think Marietta's still discussing a few things. Probably just trying to think about yeah what happened there, what adjustments they can make. I would, if I was Marietta here, I would focus certainly on trying to reduce how many early game um, early game deaths that they have. They seem to lose one or two very quickly at the start of a round which hinders them for the rest of the round and will um, makes a pretty big struggle. It would be great if they could flip it and get a couple kills themselves um, early round. Yeah, you just kind of have to watch to, to give away the... I'm not saying they gave away early kills, but Colorado did seem to do pretty well with spotting them out and taking at least one or two out pretty early. Yeah. All right, so we're still uh, waiting for a little bit. I'm going to go check with them real quick, and I'll be right back. So okay. just hang tight, people. Uh, 
as soon as everyone is ready, we will get this going. So just give us one minute. Looks like Marietta is ready, so as soon as Coach finishes talking with him, we should be uh, on our way with a second map here. Okay, I think everyone said they were ready, so we're going to get this started up. So we're going to get this started up here. So once again, uh, this is uh, game two, Marietta College versus Colorado School of Mines. So we are in the ban phase for consulate. So we'll see uh, what changes for Pix, for, well, I shouldn't say Pix yet, but what will be banned. We do have a jackal again. So, of course, we would expect that. Yes. He's probably one that's just kind of banned regardless of what map you're playing in. Yeah. Let's see if they go Dokubi again, maybe? Sure. Blackbeard, okay. Okay, so what makes Blackbeard special? Blackbeard uh, has a shield that is attached to the front of his rifle. It, it's a small shield, it basically protects him from headshots. He has two of them, and they do get destroyed after a couple hits of damage. So he is good for uh, peeking, peeking ledges, peeking corners, because he's protected from headshots. Hmm. But the mirror again. Okay, so probably not out of the ordinary, probably another expected mm -hmm. ban. See if they pick Echo again or go go a new op. Valkyrie, okay. <laughs> Alright, so we'll see uh, what Mary decides to pick. So it looks like Maria is going with. See, so I thought they were going to go with Legion, but there it looks like they're picking Smoke Rook. Okay, they're so they were going with Legion, but they decided to change who's going to be playing that. Seems. I've got a lot of operators we've seen before. A new one is Bacon's Choice of Lion. Um, his ability allows him. He has a sort of like a, a recon drone that sits up atop of the map that. When you activate his ability, it will detect. Oh, he's switched out actually. It will okay, detect right. any moving um, defenders. Okay, but we see Marina going with the vigil. I don't think we've seen that before yet. Yes, yeah, so vigil, uh, he has an ability where he attackers can to locate be invisible bomb. for a period of time to the attacker's drones, which allows him to roam the map. So whenever the attacker's drones are scouting out um, areas of the room so they can push forward. They won't see a vigil. So a vigil could just be hiding in a corner and they'll think it's clear. They'll walk in and the vigil will bomb. So it's kind of like problem. camouflage. Yeah. Attackers have located a bomb. Okay, so Colorado's already a dip. I couldn't catch which bomb site they found, but they found one of them. Five seconds left before insertion. Attacker's objective is to defuse a bomb. Toxin. I'm out. Okay, so we did hear the toxin being put out, which of course we would expect that. 
So now it's a matter of seeing how Colorado uh, will infiltrate. So we already see one of the windows blown out. So Colorado found the other bomb, so. Now we already see Beowulf taking out one uh one of Marietta's already. And he's just sitting there waiting for someone to walk by and they paid off for him. Well, the bubble was actually to take out two for himself. So it is even up three to three, although bubble is very low, so it's yes. kind of like two and a half at this point. Yeah. We see frags taken out uh, by bacon in a cup. With the diffuser de uh, dropped, Colorado's probably going to be looking to just try and take out the remaining members of the Pioneers. Baby Wolf was able to take out Boba, so there's only one left. But Rez was able to take out down one, so it's just a matter of see if he can take him out while they're planning the diffuser. So Rez is going to have to do something here, but he is extremely low on health. So now Rez is going to have to be able to take out both without pretty much taking any hits and then disable the... I was say disable the diffuser, but... <clears throat> Very so, back and forth round there with a um, couple double kills, triple kill coming in. Yeah, so I think overall Mary did better, it was just... I think that one spot where Colorado was able to get two kills with someone walking through just mm -hmm. kind of skewed it in their favor. Yeah, they almost had it with uh, the thermite protecting the diffuser. Um, or not, yeah. Castle, I think it was. On the Marriott team, they were protecting the diffuser. And if they were able to, to keep that there, they most likely would have won the round. But Beowulf did, um, was able to recover the diffuser. So now I see Marianna bring out the Pulse and the Frost. So I know Frost has got like those big bear traps. Yes, her bear traps, which are useful because they're not um, they're not electrical, so you can't destroy them other than gunfire or Don't grenade. step on them. Or step on them, of course. Okay, it looks like Marianna's swapping out the Legion for the Rook, so just getting that extra armor. So maybe they didn't find the uh, the Legion traps beneficial Attackers last time. To locate and defuse bombs. It looks like they're going for the same bomb site, but um, but Barry's going with the pulse. So, what difference would uh, the round make with a pulse in their comp? Um, with pulse, the well, the attackers were pretty good at staying um, hidden. A couple times, I did see a couple of the defenders um, get taken out because they simply did not know where the attackers were. So Pulse certainly helps out a lot with that. He can remaining. see attackers through walls and whatnot. So because he has that little scan thing that kind of, it's not yeah. like detecting heat signatures, so but heartbeat. kind of like heartbeats yes. or something. Yeah. He was very good with locating the attackers. All right, so we'll see if this, that, that extra knowledge will help them out. So we see Beowulf taking out that that bathroom window. He's already got the drone in there too to try to get some uh, intel. You can see 
see getting that nitro charge off on bacon. Heartbeat sensor deployed. Nitro oh, so he's trying to find people, but he's not having much luck there. Sensor deployed. Well. He has found someone. So he knows that they're trying to like enter the bathroom, it seems like. And mm -hmm. two for Colorado are already down. Frags was able to get another kill. Yeah, because of that pulse there, um, they're able to find out where they were and take them out, I believe. So they would probably be, now for me, I don't know any way to think about this map, but they would know enough about if they, that they see a blip somewhere, they probably have an idea of what room they're located. Exactly, yeah. So with two down for Colorado, it just seems like it could be playing the waiting game to see if Colorado makes a move because they got about a minute 20 left. Now, is there a, a range? Okay, so one for Merritt has gone down, but they was able to at least uh, trade there since so two before. But is there like a, a range limit? Yes, there on is. Okay. They have to be relatively close. So it'd be pretty OP if you can like have a much farther yeah. distance. Looks like Frags is just kind of on a roll, taking out people, so there's only one for Colorado left. Mm -hmm. Deploying heartbeat sensor. But Zan was able to take out Frags, but he should be at least be able to tell them where the where he's located. Yeah, so now now Zenith is, is uh, in a tough spot because the, the defenders do know where he is. We have to sort of rotate around, try and get a different uh, attacking route. Scanning. And with Paul still in play, it's going to be very tough for him to get any sort of drop. And he's only got 15 seconds left. And he's already taken some damage. But not much, but he has 10 seconds to plant. And does end up taking out uh, Rico, but still like 5 seconds to try to put something down. And we do see Mary at NBC finishing off uh, Zenith. Yeah, Pulse was a very, very, uh, very good pick for Merida there. Crucial to their uh, their victory in this round. So they were able to point out at least at least two of them. They were able to get kills because mm -hmm. they knew where they were located. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how Colorado can respond to that uh, that Pulse. So, is there a good counter to that? Um, I know that IQ. Okay, there we go. IQ. Yeah, she can see Pulse whenever he's using his ability, so it's sort of a, a two-way thing. They can see each other. It doesn't look like Merida is going to be going for the Pulse. Although now we see the Maestro, at least currently selected, that might change. But I wouldn't expect Merida to pick the Pulse if they know that Colorado is going to go with the IQ. Yeah, they probably did um, anticipate that. And it looks like Colorado will swap out with a Thatcher, but Marietta will not make any changes. So I don't think we've seen a Maestro in this game yet, or in, in the entire match. So what does this do so for Marietta? So Maestro places down cameras that can, they can't be destroyed, they're tough to destroy. They have sort of an armor around them, and with these cameras, he can shoot out a um, sort of laser um, that does a little bit, little bits of damage. So, but whenever he does um, try and shoot his laser out of his camera, his camera is exposed and can be destroyed. So, he's good with Ten seconds um, remaining. keeping a camera in a place you don't want the attackers to remove it from, attackers as well as just being pretty annoying. It's something the attackers have to deal with. Attackers' objective is to defuse a bomb. Okay. And we see that Merida has changed locations for the bomb. We'll see how that works out. Looks a like a Maestro camera next to a, a Jaeger device, which is good for defending it against uh, grenades and stuff. So it looks like we see kind of a similar breach wall from Clubhouse yeah. over here in the was it the garage? I don't know what you would call that. Yeah, we've got the bandit tricking going on right here. 
And we see that uh, Bacon was able to take out Rez. Now they will have the hole open in the garage. Very good for the, for the attacking team here. Colorado. And we see actually IQ taking a lot of damage there. Doesn't quite go down, but it's very low. But Rico for Merida goes down, so right now it's a 5v3 in favor of Colorado. And now it's a 5v2, and NPC's about to go down. This is getting very low. So there's only one left for Marietta. Yeah, with that, with that garage open up, it's very, very tough to successfully defend. Although Bubba is going to get another kill. And unfortunately, Boba does go down. I mean, when it's 4v1, it is kind of hard to come back yeah. from that. You did get a uh, couple kills, though. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, just not enough there. Yeah, Bandit getting taken out by that IQ in the beginning was a very crucial moment. Because then, you know, since you don't have the, uh, the yeah. electric kind of wall there, they can just breach through it without any exactly. trouble. So we'll see if Merida can make any adjustments uh, with that. So they're going to go with so far the Rook and the Jaeger. And Echo was not banned, so he, we could see an Echo here. Yeah. In fact, so far we do see an Echo, unless there's any changes. see anything yet so this might be what we see they are going back to the garage echo possibly going to help defend that doorway where iq was able to to take out bandit attackers need to locate and defeat and we did see that colorado went with the ash to kind of get that the, the breach from the distance yes so you think they'll try to use that for the the garage to get in through that way or maybe she cannot she can't take out reinforced walls but she can take out pretty much anything else. Um, that doorway by Jaeger right now, by Frags, she probably will take out. Attackers have discovered maybe the location of a bomb. hatches above if they're not reinforced. I assume they will be. Ten seconds left. Seems like Colorado does have an idea where they are. They know they are heavily defending the garage. Yeah, because they probably can at least hear that the walls are being reinforced mm -hmm. there, so they know. That's yeah, the same bomb, bomb site. We should try to see where they're trying to enter from. Drones ready. And we see Frags was able to take out one pretty early on, so getting that early kill advantage may help them. <laughs> Actually, Bubba was able to get another kill. Seemed to be missing all the kills. Yeah. <laughs> Although Res isn't going down, so it is a 3v4, but still in favor of the Pioneers. Although NPC is taking a couple shots. Yeah, the bandit is gone again. That is going to be tough if they decide to go through the garage again. Right. Looks like they already have. Well, they got a drone in there. I don't know if they've actually breached a wall. Oh yeah, they breached the wall. <laughs> and color is around there. Yeah, they are planning the diffuser, so Marietta is going to have to respawn. Well, they were, but they stopped. It looks like there was a one-for-one -one trade. Cover me, reloading. A bomb has been located. But. But now it's dead, even 2v2. The bubble goes down, but NPC is extremely low. Essentially a 1v1 now. Although NPC is very low on health. So he's going to have to uh, be able to take out Sledge without practically taking a hit at all. Mm -hmm. Which is doable. I mean, the diffuser's right there, so Sledge would have to... They, have, they do get the res there. Oh, he did. 
And they did pick up the diffuser, so they're probably going to try to plant it soon. In fact, they are trying to plant it right now. Attackers are activating the diffuser. So at this point, NPC is going to have to go in. So he was using his cameras to try to do a couple of shots. But unfortunately, Colorado was able to take the round at the end. Yeah, there wasn't much he can do after he, uh, after they got that res off. And they probably had a good idea of where he was going to be, so they yeah. just had to wait for him to peek out. Not much health left either. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's only round five. I mean, Colorado, so it's only up three to one, so two rounds. So Merida can definitely, if they take another round, so it's the only difference by one round. So, oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah it's, it's been very close each round as well. Could have gone either way. It looks like Merida is hovering over the the pulse, and that that worked for him in the round that they won. It did very well. Although Colorado is still going with the IQ, but they might just say, "Forget it. We need that pulse no matter what." Mm -hmm. I would take that trade, definitely. I feel like Pulse is definitely worth having. Although we see Colorado Loki. looking at a Finca. Yeah, Finca, uh, she has an ability where when she activates it, it stimulates herself and her teammates and gives them, I believe, 20 bonus health as well as it makes them faster. And if someone is down, it actually will res them. That seems pretty strong. Pretty strong. Um, it can't give you health over your maximum. I mean, it does, but it will it will slowly run out. Attackers have located a bomb. Interesting, since I you don't see at least I haven't seen too many thinkers out there. So it seems like she'd be pretty good for most comps. Yeah, she is. She's good for more aggressive playstyles. As well as just an overall team heal. Might be a inclination of how Colorado's going to play here. So we might anticipate a very aggressive round here from them. Yeah, and with Lion on the uh, Lion in play, defenders won't be able to move around too much. He'll be kind of locked in place when he uses his ability. In fact, we already see trying to breach, almost converging together. And they swapped the diffuser. Attackers have recovered their diffuser. And we already see one from Marietta going down. I also noticed that it seems like a lot of times teams will, before they peak, they'll try to pre-fire. Yeah, pre-firing is a is a very popular strategy. It's just it helps um, take out the enemy before they even uh, can able to react. And we see frags wow. actually getting three kills there. Even with that Finca going off, frags was able to. Uh, do very well. He did flank them, it seems. So now there's only one left for Colorado. But now it looks like it's going to be a 1v1 because oh, no. Boba is very Boba low. Is and actually, he goes down. But Finca, um... Beowulf does not have the diffuser. So I think it will have to go for the... But it looks like Finka's just saying, forget the diffuser, we're just going to go after frags. Yeah, that is probably the best strategy. And he does know where he's at. Looking for any wall bangs. And frags was able to yeah. spot out the Finka. So, Beowulf was betting on frags going to the left, um, which gave away his position, frags uh, ended up 
getting him. So with that, we're just a one round difference. Mm -hmm. This game's looking much, much better, much closer. So we see a pretty standard comp for Marietta. We bring out the bandits and the, the Cade this time. And it shows that they're going to have a bomb at the garage, so it makes sense to have the, yes. the bandit there. Although right now, Colorado does not have a thermite out, so they may do a, a six pick to get the thermite. And We're switching thermite. I mean, I say have the thermite. I meant the uh, yeah, Thatcher, yeah. sorry. Okay. Actually, no, they swapped the thermite for the Capitao. Capitao, okay. So they might not, they're definitely not going to be looking for a garage breach. I wonder uh, what strategy they're going to look for. I don't know why I said earlier uh, the thermite. Thermite is definitely. I didn't have the Thatcher, but yeah, thermite Thatcher similar, similar. Yeah. Names. We start with TH. Yeah. So what would be Colorado's strategy with this approach if they're if they're not going to try to breach the the garage? I assume they're going to try and focus bomb A because there's only one way to get to B without the garage. So with bomb A, they're probably looking to get down the other two stairwells or any hatches. To go. And they know that bomb A is there. In fact, IQ has a drone Five there keeping an eye on it. Attackers are moving to defuse a bomb. So if they're gonna go for A, you would think Mario would try to reinforce that a little bit more. Or maybe try to reinforce everything else. And one for Colorado has already gone down. So a nice kill there by Rez. And Frax is able to take out another, but there was a trade off. Beowulf was able to take out NPC, but so it is a 3v4. But Frags goes down, so now it's a 3v3. Getting the plant off. Oh, yeah, we got a one for one trade. Defenders have eyes on the Attackers need to protect it. But now I think there's only down to 1v1, so it's Res versus Zenith. And Colorado gets just the last second there. Who's reloading at the the wrong time there? They did focus bomb A. That one was very close. It's just he just came down to that last play there. So at this point, it looks like the roles have swapped. So Marietta will be attacking now, mm -hmm. and Colorado, Colorado is going with if Ela is that how you pronounce it? Ella. Ella. Um. Or Ella, I'm not actually sure. I call her Ella, but she she has these traps that she sets. Um, if anyone, any attacker walks near them, they explode. They don't do any damage, but they heavily concuss and disorient the attacker. So they're probably looking at trying to plant something, and then when Marietta comes in, yeah, let it set it off, disorient them, and then kill them on sight. Mm -hmm. We see Marietta making a swap to bring out the the sledge and. NPC's going with the Nomad, I don't think we've seen her yet in this match. Oh uh, yeah, she does the, um, the knockback projectiles that if someone gets in their Defenders range, they get knocked your back. Bombs from being defused by attackers. They're probably betting on them going garage, maybe. Bomb located by attackers. They pick Thatcher and Thermite. But we'll see what they can do now that they've gone uh, upstairs. Yeah, they know where the bomb is. At least bomb A, so they should know where bomb is most likely. Mm -hmm. So given that the bomb site is in a different location, how effective would be Thermite and Thatcher in this case since they're not having to breach the garage? They're not, they're not going to be too effective. Just because 
there's a lot of attackers are heading out to defuse um, a bomb. A lot of ways the defenders can camp each reinforced wall. Like if they do happen to take out a wall, it'd be great, but there really isn't much of an opportunity to because you're pretty much already in the bomb site. And we saw already very early trade there. Rico going down for Marietta, but Zenith for Colorado also goes down. Bomb located by attackers. Marietta has found the second bomb site, so that may be where they're going to be targeting. Two for Mary to have already gone down. Actually, no, I take that back. It was a one for one trade, and then Boba was able to get another kill. So it's now a 3v2 in favor of Marietta. So it's all Fractal was trying to rappel down and get a shot, mm -hmm. but. And uh, looks like Pride. Pride took him out and then tried to go for the second kill on the other repelling attacker, um, but wasn't able to get it and went down. Mm -hmm. And then we see NPC going out, so now it is a 2v2. The minute 25 left. And another goes down from Marietta, so all that's left is uh, Rez. So at this point, he's just going to find a way in and see if he can get the last two kills. He made quite a bit of noise here, so do you think they've already know where he's coming from? Yeah, on? they definitely have an idea of what side he's entered from. So very nice third kill there by Rez. I mean, Anna did not see that coming at all. It's definitely possible now. 1v1. Yeah, it's just going to be a matter who spots who first. But there's still 29 seconds, so uh, Rez is going to have to make a move here. Now we're down to 20 seconds. And it looks like Bacon is waiting for Rez to go right through that door, so he's probably going to be anticipating. But now he's going to go around the other side. But there's only 10 seconds left. He tried so close there. Yeah, it was a close one. Once you, when you're running out of time like that, you really just have to rush. And at that point, it's very tough to get that get that kill whenever they're just waiting for you. Yeah, it's just like Bacon kind of trying to make it look like it was going to go from the left, mm -hmm. but then go right and Bacon and seemed to anticipate that he was going to go right. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that has to be a, a tough one to take. Yeah, like the past few rounds have all been 1v1s to the end. Very easily could have been, you know, um, Marietta up at this point. Mm -hmm. We'll see what adjustments are made. Doesn't look like it, doesn't look like anything too much. Mm -hmm. well, they keep with the Thatcher and the Thermite banking on them switching to garage, and yes. it looks like that gas is going to pay off because mm -hmm. they are going to be at the garage. Although so far Colorado does not have. It was the Blitz, right? Or am I thinking the, the other one? Um, the one with the electric. Uh, Bandit. Bandit, yeah, Bandit. So they don't, yeah, yeah they Blitz don't is the one with the shield that blinds. And, yes, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so they're not picking they with the Bandit. Interesting. They might, interesting choice. They won't be able to, to the Bandit trick that garage. So it's almost like they're going to just... Um, it's not like they're just going to be giving up. The, I mean, they'll reinforce the garage door, but... Yeah. It's almost like they're going to concede it. Interesting. We'll see how they play this. They do have smoke though, so we can cover anyone trying to come through the garage if they do breach it. Mary at least does know that there is a bomb at the garage in the, the cafeteria. Attackers are moving to defeat. 
the bomb. Just taking the time, although Frax is already in pretty deep. They do have thermite reaching the garage. Yeah, and without uh, Bandit, it's going to be pretty easy to breach that. That should get Colorado's attention. Mm -hmm. So they do spot out one person. Mary, I was able to take out one. The attacker's bomb diffuser has been dropped. Attackers recovered the bomb. Attackers have dropped the bomb diffuser. Although, Zena, although two kills for Colorado, so NPC and Rico are down. And Frags goes down too, so there's only uh, two left for Marietta. They have 53 seconds, so they're going to have to try to get the remaining kills. And there's another reloading at just the wrong mm -hmm. time, unfortunately. Yeah, I probably did not expect that. Okay, that was a very successful strategy for Colorado there. They're almost playing around. They are playing around the fact that they were going to breach the garage. Yeah, it's just like they just kind of plan on. So this is match point. So if Colorado wins this round, then they do uh, will win the game and win the match. So we'll see what Marietta does this time. It looks like the... Interesting. Getting a Montag and a Fuse out. Or they're going to swap it. Montag one does it usually gets banned, but I actually didn't see a ban at all in these games. Yeah, he's, he's pretty uh, pretty annoying to, to defend against simply because you, you can't shoot him whenever he has that shield fully deployed. So they are going to stick with, with Mon, so maybe using just kind of yeah, get some extra vision. As many bombs as they can. Just kind of go out there and say, yeah, you can't kill me, but I can mm -hmm. say, see where everyone's at. Yeah, it would have been very helpful in that last round. You could have just went through the garage, no problem. So it looks like Marietta should be able to determine where the bomb is. Maybe Res has his... Grown. Although it hasn't said that they found the bomb yet. But they do know that Colorado's up there, so they can probably assume yeah, that the bomb is located up in this area. Rico uh, has gone with Fuse, probably hoping to clear out a couple rooms. Attackers are moving to defuse a bomb. So we'll see what Marietta can do here, because this, basically, even if they win this round, they're going to have to win every single round for now on if they want to stay in the in the match. And we see Colorado trying to spawn peek a bit. We 
see one from Colorado already down. Although it is a trade. This res ends up going down. And frags ends up going down too. So it looks like Colorado's trying to play a little aggressive with their defense. It's just to prevent Marietta from even infiltrating. Yeah. And it's paying off. Marietta can't even get out of spawn. Are they taking advantage of the fact with the Mons, he's not really doing a lot of damage, so they know they can kind of peek a little bit more without taking hits? Mm hmm. But they probably um, suspected what kind of strategy where they're gonna where they're gonna go when they pick Montag. Um, very tough situation area in right now. Yeah, because really Rico's the damage dealer, so if he goes down, there Monty's not gonna be able to do yeah. much. Montaigne's gotta, gotta try and do something here to help out Fuse. But the problem is if he tries to shoot, he's gonna expose himself. Yeah. Yeah, and Bacon was able to take out Rico, so Monty's yeah. all that's left, so there's not really a whole lot he can do. So Colorado's just gonna swarm him and take him down. And there you have it. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it was a good try for Marietta, it just yeah. didn't quite work. Colorado does take it here. Very unfortunate loss. Mm -hmm. Marietta, meant almost all of those rounds did come down to 1v1s. And we're super close. It very easily could have gone either way. Oh yeah, I mean, most of those would have definitely been like that. But that is unfortunate. So, uh, with that, Maria does fall to Colorado. Although, I will say, just been watching their games from the past couple mm -hmm. weeks, there's definitely improvement. And it this certainly is, has. And yeah. it's a very new... Uh, I wouldn't say new, it is technically a new team, but a very young team. Yeah. It is one of our newest teams uh, this year for our esports program. So I think if they can make the adjustments and just keep improving with each week, maybe this isn't going to be the season for them, but for the spring season, we may see mm -hmm. uh, some more progress there. Oh, yeah, I'm very confident um, about the future of this team. They Just from the past game to this game, I'm already seeing uh, lots of improvement. Yeah, so even though it's a loss, I mean, just got to keep looking for the, the improvements. Uh, so that will be it uh, for us tonight. So first of all, thank uh, Grant, thank you for coming. So oh, thank you for hopefully you'll be able to come back and oh, contact absolutely. more. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and then for everyone here, just a couple of reminders. So tomorrow we will have our Overwatch and League of Legends team go up against uh, 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 Ohio Northern University. That will start at 11 a.m. We already had our Rocket League match yesterday, so we will not be broadcasting that tomorrow morning. So... Be sure to get up and be able to join us at 11 a.m. tomorrow for Overwatch, followed by League of Legends, which that should start around noon. Uh, we will have this match uh, uploaded to our YouTube channel next week. But once again, if you want to watch the match earlier, then you can always subscribe to our channel. We, we do see uh, one subscription from earlier today. So thank you for your support. It is much appreciated. Uh, and just once again, if, for all the latest updates, please be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, and just hope you have a great evening and hope to see you back tomorrow morning.